think you're on mute, Doc. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, Doc. Okay, can you see my slides, Randy? Uh, yes, Doc. Okay, so I start, huh? Okay. Okay, so hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks, Randy, for the introduction and uh, for letting me speak here. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm just here to share my experience with um, hind limb amputation. Uh, just going to give you guys some, some of the tips that I found helpful doing hind limb amputations. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, okay, so hind limb amputations, the main indications would be, you know, your basically your cancers. Uh, your sarcomas, your giant cell tumor, that sort of thing. Um, those are the best indications for um, your hind limb amputation. Okay, so before any surgery, uh, you want to consider your, your pre-op stuff. So definitely give broad spectrum antibiotics um, before the surgery uh, so that we have antibiotic coverage during the surgery. And of course, uh, fluids during surgery and heating is especially important for uh, small cats, uh, yeah, and all your other smaller patients. Anesthesia-wise, uh, yeah, just make sure you do a thorough physical examination. Uh, if you can, run some pre-anesthetic blood uh, to make sure everything else is fine uh, before you go ahead with the amputation, which is not a small surgery in itself. Okay, analgesia. Uh, if you can give an epidural, that's the best. Uh, so I basically uh, summarized the epidural here. Um, your basically all your techniques. Um, you can read up on awesome as well. They give quite a good summary there. Uh, but yeah, basically it gives really good analgesia for the hind limb amputation. Um, so yeah, that would be a good one. The next form of analgesia would be your direct nerve blocks. Uh, so I'll show some pictures in a second on how you can block the nerve directly before um, cutting it. Instruments, quite basic. Um, you just need a bone saw, a bone file. And using bone wax to cover the stump is controversial because it's a foreign body um, in essence. Uh, but you know, if you don't have access to it, it's not the, the end of the world. Okay, draping, your four quarter drapings uh, as, as per any major surgery, uh, and then and have an assistant help you to hold um, the leg and then bandage the, the end of the foot um, with your sterile drape and your sterile bed wrap. Okay, so I'm just going to run through um, basically a gold standard way of doing a high limb amputation. Um, if you need further details, you know, feel free to refer to the Fossum's textbook. Um, but these are just mostly the, the main pointers that I found useful when um, doing my high limb amputations. Okay, so at the very start, you want to make sure that you leave lots of skin uh, to cover up your stump at the end of the surgery. So you want to make your incision as low as possible. Um, so just right above um, the patella. Um, so you can see the image there. You want to have your lateral incision uh, more distal than your medial incision. And if you have a marker, that's great. You can you know, mark, mark out where you want to cut the skin and it helps with planning the surgery. Okay, and then you know, you just cut incise through the skin and go through your subcut layers. Um, for cats, it's fairly easy to identify your muscle bellies. Um, so try your best to basically isolate all of them and cut them through cleanly. Um, it will make for an easier closure um, when you get to the point of closing uh, the, the spumoral stump. Okay, so pictures there just to show you, you know, how to isolate the muscle. Um, yeah, and use a nice sharp scissors to cut through the muscle. Okay, so I start on the medial side and you transact through all the muscles on the medial side. 
once you get visualization of the femoral vessels, you can start tying it off. So with the with cats, it, it's not so bad. You can ju just do your normal like ligatures for the femoral artery. Um, but for larger dogs, you would want to put a transfixation suture uh, for the artery just to make sure it doesn't slip. Um, and definitely always um, double ligate your arteries and your veins. Okay, so once you've uh, ligated the femoral vessels, you can go ahead and transect the rest of the muscles on your medial side. And then we move on to the lateral side. We start with the, the quads. So, you know, cut through the quads, then you have access to your sciatic nerve. I have a picture right here um, showing a direct nerve block um, for the sciatic nerve. Uh, so with nerves, you want to cut as proximal as possible, which means to leave as little of the, the nerve as possible. Uh, so you see me here um, injecting the local anesthetic as high up as possible and then transacting the, the nerve as high up as possible. Okay, once you've uh, cut through the nerve, you can go ahead and cut through the rest of the muscles um, on the lateral side. And it, it, it sounds fairly straightforward, but um, you know, just take your time, isolate all the muscles, make sure you like your vessels properly. There will be a few small vessels that may be out. And if you find those, just ligate them as well. And then with the nerve, just make sure you do a direct nerve block to, to you know, improve the, the analgesia um, during the surgery. Okay, once we get to the bone, um, you have to sort of scrape off the adductor muscles um, to have a nice exposure of your femur. So your femur, you don't want to cut it too distally. You want to at least um, cut off uh, two thirds of your femur right there. Um, just because leaving a, a long stump is, is not ideal um, in any sort of functional sense. So, so try and get two thirds of the femur out and have enough muscle to cover over the, the femoral stump that you're leaving behind. Uh, one thing to sort of take note of is, is make sure you flush um, your osteotomy site. Uh, make sure there's no debris um, or any bone chips left behind. Um, after you saw through uh, the femur. Okay, so you've taken the foot out, um, send it away for histopathology if indicated for, for your cancers and your neoplasias. Um, and now you should have a uh, lot of muscles left uh, to close the amputation site. So you wanna be covering um, basically your femoral stump. Uh, so you can start on medial side. Um, so stitch your medial, your lateral side to your medial side, and then your caudal side to your cranial side of, of the femoral stump. Um, simple continuous. I just use simple continuous to to sort of oppose the muscles on the medial lateral side and the cranial caudal side. Um, yeah. And then when you're closing, make sure to close as much dead space as possible. Uh, you don't want any seromas uh, forming within the dead space. So close the subcut tissue before you start closing the skin. Okay. And then for your skin layer, just close with a four interlocking suture. Uh, if you're using non-absorbable, you can have the patient come back um, to basically assess the amputation site in about 10 to 14 days after the surgery. Okay, so post-op pain relief, very important. Um, we've already given your local anesthetics before and during the surgery. Afterwards, uh, you need to give more pain relief as well. Um, fentanyl patch works quite well. Um, or if you have the opportunity to hospitalize the patient, uh, you can do CRIs as well. Okay, and then basically just observe for any heat, swelling, discharge, um, and make sure you, you check for any post-op uh, infection of the amputation site. So generally recovery periods are uh, about one week, um, could be a lot faster in cats, could be a bit longer for large dogs. Um, so yeah, that's the time frame for your recovery. 
And then lastly, physiotherapy is something you can consider, um, especially for your large big dogs that you know are struggling to cope with the three legs initially. Um, you can try physiotherapy to help them cope with the, the post-op uh, care. Okay, so that's just a quick run through um, the hind limb amputation. Hope that helps and it's not a lot of reference there, um, but your foursome is your main textbook for your surgery. And then I've just included um, a little bit of detail for your epidural and your local nerve block um, using the, the bay view, you know, anesthetic and analgesia guidelines. Okay, that's, that's the, the end of my little talk here. I uh, hope that's useful. If you have any questions or you want access to the slides, just let Randy know. I'll send it to Randy and then uh, he can distribute it to you guys. Okay, thank you. And uh, Randy, I'm, I'm done with the talk. Uh, thank you, Doc. Um, the doctors did have uh, some questions. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask about, uh, did you use any epidural? Uh, yeah, I use epidural. So let's go back to the slide on the epidural. Epidurals are the best way to give your analgesia before the op. Um, so just to briefly run through, you know, you, you look for the lumbosacral junction, um, you hinge your tail up and down, you find your depression, and then basically you have a one and a half inch um, needle. You go through um, all your layers and you try to feel the pop when you go through uh, basically your, your epidural layer. Um, you should um, have negative pressure when you're in the epidural space. So you can, for example, put a drop of saline in your needle hub. And if the saline gets drawn into the needle uh, and into the epidural space, you know you're in the right spot. And you can go ahead and inject your local anesthetic uh, so one thing I forgot to mention earlier on is uh, with bupivacaine, so be extra careful not to exceed the, you do a good calculation before um, giving your epidural and also take into account how much you're giving for the direct nerve block um, during the surgery of the sciatic nerve. Um, there's really only one nerve to block for your hind limb amputation, which is the sciatic nerve. Um, so you can just count it as one site for the direct nerve block. Yeah, I hope that answers the, the question. Uh, yes, Doc. Aside from um, bupivacaine, hmm. any other um, anesthetic drug that we can use for... Uh... Epidurals? Yes, Doc. Epidurals, you can use uh, lidocaine as well. But lidocaine has a shorter duration of action. Um, it's about, I think about two hours, but the onset is much quicker. So prefer bupivacaine because it gives a longer period of analgesia, um, even after the surgery. And you can put your fentanyl patch right on after the surgery and it, it, it sort of coincides uh, with the wearing off of your bupivacaine. But if you only have lidocaine, uh, just know that it will wear off a lot faster than Bupi became. Thank you, Doc. Um, from the audience, who may have questions for, um, please ask. Hello. <laughs> Something in the chat, maybe. Oh, how long is the procedure in general? Should I answer that, Randy? Uh, yes, doc. From Doctor Keen. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for cats, I would say anywhere between um an hour and a half. Uh, well, I think if you're really quick, you could do it in, in about an hour, um, excluding prep time from the time you cut. Um, so if you're really quick with isolating the muscles and cutting through them, ligating your vessels, 
um, and cutting through your nerve, uh, you could, you know, potentially do it in under an hour and a half. Okay, I have another question here. When yes. would you prefer coxal femoral versus mid femoral? Um, this question, uh, it, it is slightly sort of your personal preference and what your experience is as well. Um, I do mid femoral femoral because that's the one I'm most used to. Um, with coxal femoral, you tend to have a bit more difficulty sort of uh, isolating the muscles because you have to go a lot further up and there may or may not be a bit more bleeding um, with uh, your coxal femoral. Um, but definitely if you could do a coxal femoral, um, the sort of the risk of infection of the femoral stump is, is not there with the coxal femoral amputation. Um, but if you do a clean surgery, there's, there's uh, little reason why um, your femoral stump would get uh, infected. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if your, your femur is, is the one that, you know, has the osteo osteosarcoma, do a coxal femoral, just remove the whole femur. Um, doc, for the post of painkiller, um, what if we don't have a fentanyl patch or any fentanyl uh, derivative medication? What other pain meds that we can use? Like you mentioned earlier about the CRI? Yeah, you can try ketamine CRI, and it's a good one. Um, and if you have opioids, you know, your methadone, if, if that's your uh, only choice, then, you know, give, give a good dose of methadone uh, three to four times uh, PID or QID, yeah. Um, another question from Dr. Ruth. Um, what anti-infective or anti-inflammatory drug would you recommend post-op? Okay, so if we're talking about um, antimicrobials, uh, generally I go with a broad spectrum. Um, so I tend to use amoxiclav um, before the surgery and after, so we don't you know, introduce any sort of resistance. So curum uh, before the surgery, and then you can continue with oral amoxiclav as well. Cephalosolin is a good choice as well. Um, just anything broad spectrum uh, would be good. Uh, yeah, just and just make sure your, your surgery is as clean as possible. You know, do your flushing. Uh, make sure you, you don't contaminate the site. Um, wrap your foot very well and make sure there's no contamination with hair and so on. Yeah. In terms of anti-inflammatory, uh, meloxicam is good. Um, Unless the patient has kidney issues, then you know we, we may not be able to use uh, your meloxicam. Yeah, hope that answers uh, that question as well. Um, any more questions, doctors? Uh, any more questions from the audience? Pwede niyo pong i-type. Ah, from Dr. Beberson. Uh, what post-op complication do you commonly encounter, Doc? Uh, so complications, you know, if you do a clean surgery, mostly it's, it's going to be pain-related. So inadequate uh, analgesia is probably the, the most common, I would say. Uh, of course, you, you, you occasionally might get, you know, infection of the, the femoral stump and all that. Um, but that should not be the case if you're doing a very clean sterile surgery. Uh, so I would say the main one would be, um, you know, inadequate analgesia. And if you find any sort of uh, behavior that represents pain, just go ahead and give more pain relief. Another question for Dr. from Dr. Ruth. Um, what's your thought on using end-to-end -end tube if it's, uh, is it necessary? Maybe this is the Penrose strain. Ah, okay. 
uh, for drainage, you mean? Uh, yes, sir. Right. Uh, I don't think it's necessary for any form of drainage. You just make sure you close your dead space, um, the subcut. Sometimes your skin can, you know, create a lot of dead space when you're basically blunt dissecting uh, to isolate the muscles. But drainage shouldn't be necessary if you close your dead space um, nicely uh, before closing the skin. So I don't routinely put uh, a pet nose drain. Um, a follow-up question, though, with regarding of the um, instrument that you use. You use um, bone saw instead of oscillating saw. Yeah. So if you have oscillating saw, great. Uh, you can go ahead and use it. Uh, bone saw is probably the most basic um, orthopedic tool you can use. If you have an oscillating saw, that's great. I think uh, it would uh, sort of cut a lot nicer and your bone wouldn't snap at the very end um, compared to when you're using a bone saw. Um, yeah. At the very end, when you're using a bone saw, you might snap the, the last bit of the femur and then you have to really file it down, make sure it's a smooth surface um, compared to your oscillating saw. Thank you, Doc. Any more questions from the audience, doctors? I think let's conclude our talk for tonight, Doc. Okay. Thank you for sharing your case. No worries. Uh, sorry, I was a bit late. A bit of technical um, difficulties. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone for taking time off to listen to this uh, quick talk. And yeah, hope you guys you know, have uh, nice applications uh, in the future. Okay, Doc. Thank you. And you. yeah, so just want to give you a certificate of recognition, Doc. Um, oh, thank you from us. You. I'll pass thank to you, you during your shift. Thank you. All right, thank you, Randy. Okay, Doc. Okay. Also, um, we would like to invite everyone for the Singapore Vet Show. The code is still um, available until end of the month, according to Helen, their uh, representative. Pwede pa rin pong um, join with a discount, and also. <clears throat> yeah, uh, coming up on August uh, would be a lecture from uh, our group. Uh, may mga po tayong nakuhang mga speakers. Um, open na po for registration for the VPAP 2022. Okay. If you have more questions, um, just don't hesitate to message us. Email, Dr. Zach's email will be available soon. Can I give them to them, Doc? Uh, let me give you the, the work email. Okay, Doc, sure. Okay. If there's no more questions, Docs, um, thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, Dr. Paul will take over the Philippine Society of Veterinary Surgeon. Okay. Animals soon. Okay, I'm going to head off now. Okay, Doc, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you mga doc. Let's call it a night. Um, Zoom recording will be available soon. I'll send all the links. Thank you.